uh, Sentinel data and the Indian satellites, uh, which are all the Cartosats and all the resource sats and so on. They appear in filters and the operator can filter whatever he wants to see and he can tell you if your crop is healthy, if your crop is dry, if you need to put water, if you need to do this, if you need to do that. So, uh, and there is several thousand calls a day. You have to imagine this thing is enormous. And even they expanded now, they, they will give information about selling the crop. So they, they, will, they will be able to tell you which marketplace around Bangalore you will get the best price for what you want to sell. So this is something amazing with a thousand rupee phone and the data center, just a call center, okay? Compared to the 10,000 rupee uh, instrument in each tractor. So here you see the difference between the West and India. So why do I, why, why I, I am saying this? I may be the crazy guy in the, in the whole story because I'm different, of course, from Indian people. I'm different from Western people as well. So I'm kind of a stranger of uh, an alien guy in, in between. But I think that the future of space is neither in building Ferraris, like what we are doing or the US is doing, nor in building Marutis like it is done by ISRO. Or I think the future is in the between, in the middle. And we have to find this. And if I say we, it's not me, it's you. I think that your generation is exactly in that frame that you need to find a way to make space, to make the Toyotas, the Suzukis of space. You need to find a way to make space easy, accessible, and so on. Of course, this is said, everybody, say, everybody tells about this, everybody says it, but think about it. What, is, what, what do we have today? We, we have the very expensive, and we have the low cost, the very cheap. Do we have something in the middle today? No, we don't. So there is a big lack of something that I expect to happen in the in, in coming years, which is in the medium term, in, the, in, 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 in between uh, what is happening here, what is happening there. And um, I, we, we are working on that. We, we have, um, you know, we have developed cooperation on telecommunications, on Earth observation, on... Um, Man flight. We are we we are supporting the Gaganian program in providing uh, you know training for the doctors, for the people, for all the, the medical training because this is what we do also for the European Space Agency. All the European astronauts are trained in France for the medical purpose. So we uh, are doing this now for uh, Gaganian for the Indian uh, astronauts and the Indian surgeons. But we are also working on exploration. And exploration is an interesting topic because I think the next exploration missions, the next Indian exploration missions will all be international. Be it Venus 2023, be it Mars 2 2024, be it an asteroid which is planned in near future. I think all of these need to be international. Why do they need to be international? Because there is a common agreement in the world that if anyone does a scientific mission, it, he invites the others to participate. If the US do a scientific mission, they invite all the others to participate. If Japan does a scientific mission, they invite all the others. If Russia does a scientific mission, if ESA does a scientific mission, they invite all the others. Only India did scientific missions on its own. So now that the scientific community in India is growing, it needs to have these exchanges with the others and the new, the next scientific missions of India will be international. So we are talking to ISRO on all these topics and we have already found an agreement to embark on the Venus mission. So this is a, it, it's, a, it's an absolute New thing for us also, why is it new? Because we are used to fly very expensive missions with the Americans. Opportunity, the rover on Mars. No one knows that the head of the rover is French, done by Kness, by my company. The herd of the rover, the spectrometer is French, done by Kness. More than 50% of the scientific instrument in Opportunity are French. No one knows because we just suck in communication. But this is something that it, it's absolutely essential that we get 
also in exploration, we, 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 we need to have the Ferraris because space is about the latest technology, it's about the newest thing, it's about the greatest thing. So we need to have the Ferraris. But we need a second way. We need a second way. And I, I believe there is room for exploration at lower cost than the Ferraris. No one dares except ISRO. And ISRO is not alone. What is done in this country also reflects to private companies. There is more and more private investment in exploration. Totally new. Ten years ago, five years ago, who would have believed that a private company can invest in, ex in space exploration? No way. Now you have private investment in space exploration. Everything we do on space exploration is done by private companies. Everything the US does on its moon gateway and so on is done by private companies. Tomorrow, private companies might even take the lead of the programs. So there is a big way in doing smart exploration and cheaper, I don't like the term low cost, but cheaper exploration. That is something that is probably the do a door open for the future. And um, I, uh, I will stop here because I want to make it interactive also. And uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate. I think France and India, you know, there is something between the two countries. Something that goes far more on, on, over space and uh, technical di discussions and so on. There's something about myth. You know, I, I was born at the border of France and Germany, so I lived both in France and Germany. I know the bo both of the countries. When I go back to my village and in France, and, I, and, and they know I, I'm in India, everybody goes around me and is asking, oh, that must be fantastic, and the food, and the elephants, and the yoga, and the, you know, the, just like pictures, just like myth. Not the reality, but what people imagine, what is India, and they imagine it as a terrific country, something wonderful. I take my car and do five kilometers. I go to the other side of the border. I go to a restaurant. I enter into a discussion with some Germans. What are you doing? I live in India. They're like, what? Oh my God, and you aren't sick? And is it easy? And how can you, is it, how do you do that? Is it, how can you survive? How can you, that's just five kilometers away. So when, you know, it's a, it's a question of mentality. Of course, there is a lot of things changing. There is a lot of uh, mentalities moving. But if you have an open mentality since the 60s, it's much more easy to be good in the 2020s than if you open your mentality only in 2018, you know? So that was for me. Please <coughs> feel free to ask. <coughs> Thank you. That was a great presentation. Uh, whatever you discussed was very informative. My question is to do with uh, regulations, basically. You're not able to hear? <coughs> it's recorded. Okay. Uh, one second. One second. I think the audience is quite a bit difficult. Yeah. So, uh, if you have to do anything uh, regarding space in the US, there is a lot of ITAR regulations and stuff involved, where it is to such a critical extent that it's difficult even to do projects. So how is it when it comes to France? Um, how open is France to international uh, participation? In, not in a very top level, in a very academic and student level. Uh, of course, we are, um, we, we are taken also in the ITAR thing. But what we are doing as French is totally open. So this is why also what we do with, together with India is not submitted to, to, to ITAR. I want to make a point on this. I, I, I surely won't be quoted on that, and I hope not, but I think the US went too far in normal, normal norms and putting uh, this kind of restrictions. 
uh, so that um, that, that maybe there was a commercial thinking behind it as well. And uh, we are suffering from it not only in international cooperation, but also in what we do in Europe. And um, we have been much more, too, too much accepted. We have accepted everything and signed, you know, they said, you just have to sign here, and we signed. We were stupid in a way. Now we are adults and we should uh, do things uh, on our own. And there is something that I'm telling very often to my friends at ISRO because the topic of, you know, we need to uh, get the same processes like you. It comes on the table very often. So, uh, like, if ISRO wants to sell to the world, ISRO needs to have the same quality processes, the same uh, norms, the same kind of stamps, you know, than uh, the West has. And I say, yes, you are right, but be very careful because you lose your soul in doing this. If you start doing all of this, your prices will go up like ours are. So what is the interest of being Israel anymore, you know? So you need to be very careful not to be as stupid as we were like 30 years ago when we signed the paper saying, oh yes, US, you are the God, you know? Somehow, there must be a way, I'm not, I don't know, uh, I have no clue, but there must be a way to manage, to go to the market without giving away all your uh, specificity. Thank you. Hi, Matteo. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. I don't know if you can hear me. So, um, my question is, how is the ecosystem between France, French space uh, you know, organization, because you have an added complexity of being part of the European Space yes. Agency. Yeah. And um, when I say ecosystem between your space organization and the public space uh, and the private players, right? In India right now, uh, my wife, she's trying to you know, um, collaborate with ISRO or possibly work with ISRO, right? But she's finding it difficult. But how is it in, in, in France? And part B, can you compare that to uh, the British? <laughs> if you can. Well, um, you know France has a long story with space. So we are the second investor per capita in space in the world. Um, it's something, it's hard to believe, but it's true. Uh, UK is far, far away. Um, but. Uh, what, our, our structure is definitely uh, special because we have the European Space Agency, but we are also more than half of the finan I mean, we, we have a f f financing more than half of the European Space Agency, so we have a special role. Um, what is interesting is that um, the ecosystem in France is at different levels, and this is why I push Indian companies to come to France. Not to bring the whole company to France necessarily, but to open subsidiary in France, which will be considered as French companies. Because what is, and I'm working with a lot of uh, people here who have already uh, made the step and opened an office in Paris or in Toulouse. The fact is that the ecosystem is extremely favorable because it has a lot of strats. You have the city. The city of Toulouse is giving grants uh, because you are a new company and you, you know, you, you, you flourish and uh, they are happy to welcome new companies, so they give, you, they give you a grant. The region is giving you a grant. The nation, the French government is giving you a grant. Then the EU is giving you a grant. Then the European Space Agency, which has nothing to do with the EU, can give you a grant. So you can have so much money from different strats. That is a big change compared to India. And this is why um, I believe that we have interest to bring m more possible su uh, Indian subsidiaries to France to also meet their French partners and uh, give a push to what we, wa to, what we want to uh, establish, which, which is a similar ecosystem, a similar startup ecosystem, new space ecosystem like you have in India. I don't have the same dynamism in France as I have in India because it's a problem of mind. <coughs> Again, people in the West are t 
tired, they, are, they don't have the same kind of uh, appetite. So I want to export this appetite there. And I, and, and I know, because when I bring French people here, they get the appetite. It is, it is like, uh, it is tr there, there is a transmission. So if, they, if, if, if you are together, there is a lot of things happening. But if you leave them alone, they are not behaving like uh, new spacers. They are more like, they say they are startups, but they are in an old space mind. So I need to bring this appetite. And with Narayan, we, we have uh, discussed this a, a lot of times. But I think the, the, we have really a chance to mix the two together. I think uh, if we, you know, it's always in the mix, in, 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 in mixes that you get the best out of it, right? If you, if, you, if you get the, the, the best part of, of uh, Indian new space, the best part of French new space, and you, you, you put it together, I am sure we can, uh, without any problem, stand front of the Americans. Thank you. Well, it's. Yes. Uh, they. They. They are Indian plants, first of all. Uh, so I said we are working on Gaganyan. We have uh, European astronauts. So we have uh, already had ten French astronauts in space. This gives me uh, the opportunity to tell uh, a last story. You know, when I started in the business, uh, I used to go uh, a lot to, uh, to be invited in universities and schools and speak about the space program. Uh, I was, uh, at the time, working on uh, international cooperation already, so they asked me about to compare different countries. And I always said that India was the model that didn't do the mistake to invest in uh, exploration and manned space, which are the killing things that, that, kill, that have killed the budget of US space, European space, even other countries. It is a fact that for years, India has concentrated on applications for society. And before everybody else thought about this is the important thing. So we did the mistake in Europe to go for power and stronger rockets and uh, sending astronauts and investing a lot in those kind of things. And we lost ground about the applications to the society. At that time, in the 70s, the 80s, India did telemedicine, teleeducation, communication by via satellite, a lot of things came from India. And so I was always saying, India is the, the model for all of us. India needs to be followed. They are the right guys. They don't do the mistake. So now India flew to Mars, flies to the moon, sends astronauts. So I can't say this anymore because, because India has become like every other one. So of course, it is fancy to send astronauts and I'm, um, I'm, I'm a, a great supporter, but be careful that we have a shop, right? The space shop, like you have uh, whatever, whichever shop uh, in uh, Residency Road. You have a shop, you have a window, and you have what you sell inside the shop. I had a huge problem for years when I was negotiating international uh, political uh, contracts is that what we have in the shop is totally different that from what we sell inside our shop. In the shop, you have astronauts, you know, in space. You have uh, the space station. You have the shuttle at the time. And inside the shop, I have solutions for fire workers, uh, for firemen. I have solutions for fishermen. I have solutions for, agri uh, for, for farmers. I have, uh, and all of that, you know. But I, I have a very hard time to sell this because the window shows to something totally else, which is taking 
the brain from our uh, people totally away. You know, you see a politician is seeing an astronaut. He doesn't want to buy anything else from your shop. He wants the astronaut. So this was a problem for so many years that when I speak about astronauts, it is fancy, it's lovely, I like it. It's what is probably holding also uh, our uh, space program together. But we need to be careful and we need to keep our feet on the ground. Thank you very much. Very interesting indeed. Um, if I can ask you to go back to the special relationship between France and India. I think Vikram Sarabhai and Indira Gandhi spoke really good French. Why, what, what are the roots of that special relationship, do you think? I, it's hard to, to comment, but I think there is a philosophical understanding between uh, the, 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 the people. Uh, we have a kind of, we think the same way. You know, very, very often, be it with, uh, with Suze, with NP, with, uh, or with Gadada, with Rohan, with all, all my friends, we say, wow, yeah, this is the, the kind of thing we have, uh, we have the same way of thinking. And uh, I'm not sure an American has the same way of thinking, you know? We are different. It's hard to explain, but we, we are more open, we are more, we, 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 we can, you know, we, we don't need to go straight. We can find solutions. We are, um, we have a way of, um, and, and we are also not thinking only in terms of science. We are thinking in terms of art. We are thinking in terms of culture. We are thinking in a, in a global way. And uh, this was very strong with uh, Madame Indira Gandhi. It was absolutely clear that and it, she was draining something in, 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 the, in the French public. Everybody loved her because she came, she spoke French, she, she spoke French on TV. I, I, I vis um, some months ago I saw uh, an old interview of her. It's just amazing and people were just blown away by this. And um, this is something where, you know, I think we work together with our heart. We are not just doing business, it's much more than that. Uh, you told that uh, you work on tech. <coughs> Sorry. You said that uh, you'll be working on uh, new technologies and you just work on it for the first time. And when it is to be built for the second time, you expect the industry to do it. Yes. So, do you have a provision for knowledge transfer or technology transfer? And yes, is it absolutely. available for Indian yeah. uh, companies? And how do you access it? So, um, it is. Well, the, the fact is that we are not working like ISRO because we, are, we don't build our own uh, instruments, our own satellites. So we always give the job to the industry from the beginning. So even if it's uh, the first time, the, the industry is doing it. And then we plan for the subsequent uh, missions for, to, to softly give it uh, over to industry and uh, some operator steps in and takes it if, if there is an interest. And if there is business behind, then some operator can handle it and uh, build a new generations of the system. In ISRO, it's still different. It is changing, but it's still different because ISRO is the only space agency in the world who builds its own systems. No one is building its uh, satellites, its rockets. Everyone is giving to industry. But ISRO is keeping itself. You know, it's, it's, in, it's, it's ISRO who builds PSLV. ISRO builds GSLV. ISRO builds the... the the GSAT satellites, the CartoSat satellites, uh, the OceanSat satellites, they are built in ISRO, by ISRO people with ISRO salaries. This is uh, totally different from everywhere else in the world. So now ISRO is speaking of, uh, as you know, of uh, bringing it out, having industry step in and so on. Here also there is a risk that prices will go up, but that's another story, but it needs to be handled carefully, and especially there is a risk of losing quality because my friend of ISRO, they are very uh, sure that uh, the day you build PSLV outside, it will be the same PSLV. You know, I did launch vehicles for 20 years and in Russia as well. And uh, I'm not sure. You give the PSLV to build to another guy, even with the same, the same instructions, it's another PSLV. So be careful. 
But, uh, but still, I think uh, the way uh, it is evolving is, uh, is a good one. And, um, and ISRO also doesn't have this rule we have. ISRO does continuity. You know, uh, you see with the ocean sats, uh, you see with the GSATs, you see with... ISRO is making satellites for the country. We are not doing that. We do the first, and then we say to industry, to private sector, please take over for the uh, other ones. So there is, this is a difference between India and France. And um, it's a matter of seeing our role. Our role is different. Our role to the society is different. We are not providing telecommunications for the French people. This is a private company providing telecommunications for the French people. So this is a, 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 the difference. <clears throat> no, let's end it here. <laughs> Actually, let it start. Let it run. 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 This one, right? This one. Yeah, that's working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's working. I guess. Okay. This is working. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ajay Sarpeshkar, and uh, I'm the director and producer of that film, uh, upcoming science fiction film called uh, Mysore Masala. And uh, I need to thank Sai and Aditya and uh, Ujwal from WeWork for putting this interesting. Uh, event together because uh, I think inquisitive minds coming together in one such space uh, is a rarity and thank you for that and uh, this is very exciting for me because up until now I've been talking to mostly filmmakers and the film fraternity about storytelling performance and everything that is not science and technology and this film is only about science and technology a, a big part of it so it's, it's very exciting for me to come talk to all you guys. And uh, on, up until yesterday, we were shooting for the film. And Sai invited me yesterday saying, hey, come talk to people who are interested in uh, taking humanity's footprint forward. Uh, because uh, I think we as explorers, uh, that's what we love to do. And uh, so I quickly threw this uh, presentation together. And I'm going to try to speak uh, my journey that's been so far. And hopefully, we all can get something out of it and, 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 and go from here. So uh, my background is in uh, science and technology. I grew up in Bangalore, went to engineering school here, and then went to the US for, a, for an advanced degree in engineering. And uh, I think somewhere uh, there was always a, a a spark for exploring more beyond science, beyond technology. And I think that's how this got birthed. Uh, and the film uh, is, is an exploration of what happens if a, if, a, if a UFO crashes on Earth, and not just crashing in the West always. What if it crashes in India? What happens then? 
So that was kind of the prelude to the film, and that's where the film starts off. And uh, uh, and there's been a lot of uh, thought behind uh, the science and technology that has gone behind the film, and it has been an experiment also because uh, this is a new genre. Uh, we've all been seeing Marvel's uh, thematic universe, DC Comics uh, thematic universe, and and all these. Uh, Films that are that that that, that they, who spend a lot of money on creating very interesting uh, visuals in terms of technology. So, uh, but we had a very limited budget uh, because this is something new uh, in terms of realistic science fiction, and so uh, we've tried to keep it in very interesting uh, by kind of studying real science. For example, uh, if sir, if you can press the space bar. To go to the next slide, yeah. Uh, all right, so yeah, so that's 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 where I think everything starts from. That's from Star Trek. Uh, I think it it it, it kind of sums up all our uh, motivation to do something bigger than ourselves. Is is that insatiable hunger for the great unknown? Some have. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into religion, but. Invariably, it goes there. Uh, so, so that's where it started. Uh, the fascination for the great unknown. Okay, what's up there? What, what, what do we do? Who is, who are we? Uh, is there anything out there? Uh, uh, I mean, looking at uh, what we've discovered so far in science and astronomy, and uh, the cosmos is really, really huge. That uh, it's, it makes me small to even talk about it. Uh, so that's where the film got its uh, origin in exploring what is out there. Um, you can go to the next slide. So uh, some of this, these are all exclusive pictures that nobody's ever seen. Uh, you guys are the first ones to see these pictures. Um, and uh, we've, we've taken a lot of uh, effort and resources to, to design our own spaceship, like, like the Millennium Falcon from Star, Star Wars. So we wanted to design our own spaceship. Uh, so we sat together with a couple of designers. We, we kind of put our heads together saying if, if a ship needs to travel across uh, interstellar distances, uh, how would it be? I mean, what does it need? Uh, how, how would the form be? And, and, and you know, a lot of things like that. And we took a lot of cinematic liberty, which we have to. Uh, so and this is just uh, draft images of all of that, what we've been doing. Next one. And, and, and coming to satellites. So uh, we. We, we kind of uh, looked at ISRO uh, metrics, uh, launch metrics, NASA's launch metrics, and we came up with uh, we came up with a lot of interesting uh, user interface design based on real technology, and 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 uh, again, all with a with a lot of cinematic liberty that we took uh, to make it interesting. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of technology, a lot of uh, scientific common sense that has gone into creating all of this. And uh, uh, I also I took liberty in, in adapting uh, something called a LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Observatory, that's in the United States and I think in France also. I'm not sure, which kind of detects gravitational 